So here we go. So the first one, I'm just separating this kind of, because that's kind of how your worksheet did it. So I'm putting 3 plus H every place that I see X. I'm going to have 4 times 3 plus H squared plus X, which is 3 plus H minus 5. So when I do this, I'm going to leave the 4 here. I square this, which remember is 3 plus H, 3 plus H, which means I have a middle term. Don't forget the middle term. So I'm going to have 9 plus 6H plus H squared when I square that. Everyone good with that? And then plus 3H, I don't need that parentheses, so I'm going to drop it. Oh, plus 3 plus H minus 5. Then I'm going to distribute the 4, so I'm going to have 36 plus 24H plus 4H squared plus H. And then can I make that minus 2? Are you good with that? Can I combine those two? Why over there? Yeah. And then I am going to write in descending order. So I'm going to have 4H squared. This 24 plus H will be 25H. And then the 36 minus 2 will be plus 34. Everyone good? Yeah. Then I'm going to do, uh, the next one was um, F of 3. So now I'm going to substitute 3 in there. So F of 3 is going to be 4 times 3 squared plus 3 minus 5. So this is 9 times 4, which is 36 plus 3 minus 5. So 31, 34. Everyone agree? And then for the next box, I want you to take this. So 4H squared plus 25H plus 34. That's this f of 3 plus h, and now I'm going to subtract f of 3, which I just said was 34, minus 34, and I'm putting that all over h. And if you're lucky, and you did it right, the numbers will simplify. I can factor out an h, so I have an h times a quantity of 4h plus 25. Those of you who had me in pre-calc know exactly how thick I am about you factoring out that h and showing me that you factored out that h. And showing me that you simplified it. So my Jax and Sophie, make sure you show me that step. If you don't show me that step, I'm taking off points. Just say yes. Any questions on the drill? Okay. Any questions on the worksheet? No questions on the worksheet? This guy right here. So, did you graph it in your calculator, or did you know the graph? So it says it says given the function that's complete the following, graph the function on the grid. Did you graph it nice and neat? So you put in negative three, and then you had these points here, and you were very particular about your points. So that's one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have something that looks like this. Yes. So the next one says find f of 1. So that's 1 squared minus 3. So that ended up being negative 2. And to check it, if I go over the 1, negative 2, I have that point there. I'm going to make that a different color. Let's make that blue. Good. And then if I do f of negative 3, that's going to be negative 3 squared minus 3. So that's 9 minus 3, and that ends up being 6. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I did a good job graphing too. Yes. So I have that. And it says use the points above to find the equation of a line passing through these points. So I am going to draw a line between these two points. Does anyone know what this line is called? If I connect two points. Seek it. That's in my draft. Oh, my, oh that, that was my thought. Okay, I didn't show oh, I'm just going to live with it. I'm not living with it. All right, so to find the slope, um, to find the equation line, I'm first going to find the slope, yes. I'm going to do the change in y over the change of x. 
So I have those two points there. Do we agree that this point is one, negative two, and this point is negative three, six? So the change of y, I would go six minus negative two over negative three minus one. This will end up being eight over negative four, so I get a slope of negative two. Everyone good with that? And then to find the equation of line, oh, this is where I have to decide, are we y is equal to mx plus b people, or are we point slope people? Okay, that's a shame. I'm a point slope person. But okay, so if we're, uh, well, I can do it. I can do it. I don't like doing it. Here we go. So you guys are y is equal to mx plus b, yes? Yeah? So you're saying your slope is negative 2. You're picking one of these points. Which point did you pick? <coughs> I pick either this one or this one. So you're picking one negative 2. So my y is negative 2. My slope is negative 2. My x is 1 plus b. So I think I get 0, do I not? b is equal to 0. It looks like it's 0. So I'm going to go with 0. So the equation line is going to be y is equal to negative 2x. And then graph the line on the grid. I did that. And then find the following values. So now I want to find f of 0. So I'm going to take 0 squared plus 3 and get 3. So that will repair 0, 3. I'm going to do negative 3, which I already did, so I'm not going to do that work again. Negative 3 was 6. Do we agree? So negative 3, 6. And then I think it wants me to find the points, the equation line passing through those points. So the change in y over the change of x. So 6 minus 3 over negative 3 minus 0, and I'm going to get 3 over negative 3. That can't be right. Is that right? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, 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 okay. So negative 3. So 9, yes? Negative 3. And so I, I didn't check my point zero, zero negative three, and then this point here. So now I want a line between those points. Let's go with that guy. Yeah. And then find the equation y is equal to mx. I'm ignoring you people. Plus b. Are we using this word pair to be okay? Fine. Y is negative three m, which is negative three times zero plus b. So b is equal to negative three. So my equation is equal to y is equal to negative 3x, yes? I knew that. And I drew that line right there, yes? Oh, I did not, did I? I feel like I made a mistake. No. 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 You have to try to do more. I still got to the three. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I drew it wrong. I drew it wrong. But I can fix that. I can just sort of swing him like that. Yeah. No. And then using f of negative 3 and f of x to calculate the slope between these those two points. So now it wants me to do the same work I just did, except for do we agree that f of x is equal to that x squared minus 3? Yes. So technically, I have a point that's x, x squared minus 3, and then, yes, Mrs. Ward, okay, now I'm ignoring you guys, and then I have this other point, which is negative 3, 6, 
Yes. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to change them. So I have to calculate the sub change of my change of x. So I'm going to do this one first. I'm going to do x squared minus 3 minus 6 over x minus 3. So I'm going to have x squared minus 9 over x plus 3. So that factors as x plus 3, x minus 3, x plus 3. Those will simplify x minus 3. And it wants me to calculate the slope, yes. So that's going to be this, that's going to be the slope. So depending on where I am, I'm going to substitute my x value in. Yes. Any questions on that? Okay, moving on. So I, I did not hear me. I'm pausing for a second. I, All right, so we talked about this. We said as we're going, I'm refreshing. So we, we go from here to here. We said we found the slope of the secant line. As we brought this dot closer and closer, we were bringing the distance of delta x to zero, which means we were finding the slope of the, the tangent line. My question. If I'm finding this to this, when I find the slope of the secant line, what I'm doing is I'm finding the average rate of change of that function. So if I'm, I'm going down here, I'm just creating a homing page. Real big. Let's make this real big. So if I have this parabola, and I have this point, because if you don't get this, then we're, we're done for the year. Uh, if I have this point here, x, and I have this point here, which I'm going to call x plus delta x, and I find the slope of the secant line, I'm finding the average rate of change from here to here. That would be what the secant line does. If I take this point and I bring it closer and closer and closer and closer and closer, so I finally find the slope of the tangent line, then I'm finding what's called the instantaneous rate of change at that point. So I'm finding exactly how quickly the graph is changing at that particular point. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you for saying that. So when I did that graph, when we did these three, when we graphed this equation on our calculator, and then we graphed these three other equations, and we zoomed in, zoomed in, zoomed in, the pink line is the one that's most closely representing the blue line, the slope of the blue line. The blue line is actually underneath the pink line. Like, can you, do you know, can you hit tab? Can you go up to whatever F4, please? Can you hit, unclick that? So I'm, he's going to turn off that graph for a second. And the blue line's right below it. Now he zoomed in a whole bunch to get this because it's like a curve, yes? So you can put that back on if that makes you happy. So see how that almost overlaps it perfectly? So that would be the slope of the That would be the tangent line at that point. Now, if, can you zoom out of that? Please? All right, then the hit menu. Menu and then go to window settings. And then uh, do like negative 10 to 10. And then why do like, let's do negative 20 to 20. I'm just randomly making up numbers. Say okay. So see, now do. So see how like this tangent line, like if I get uh, further away on that blue line, that pink line is no longer going to be a good match. Does that make sense? The, as I, like if he were to look like over here, like over here, that, that pink line doesn't represent the graph at all. So this tangent line is only good at a single point. That's my point. Does that make sense? Okay. So here's a, so you're going to have a tangent line. We're we're going to find derivatives two ways. One is going to be the um, the definition of a derivative. So this is this is how we're going to define a tangent line first is using this formula, which you will have to know. I will not give this to you. You need to. Is this not on your notes? Oh, pause. 
<laughs> so you're going to take the limit as delta x approaches zero, and then this this is the slope between the two points. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, if if the, if the, mm, the line passing through the point, then you're going to be able to find the tangent line by finding either point slope or slope intercept form. Mm -hmm. So an example one: find the slope of the graph of five x minus one. Use your results to find the equation of the tangent line at 1, 4. So I'm going up here. And I want this, I, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to find the slope of the tangent line. So I'm going to go back to that formula that I just had. Where I'm going to go back to this, the difference of the y's over the difference of the x. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to do delta x. So I'm going to have to find f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. I'm going to take the limit as delta x approaches 0. Is everyone with me? So now any place I see, any place that I see an x, I'm going to type in, I'm going to put in x plus delta x. So I'm going to first start off as 3 times x plus delta x minus 7. Everyone good? And then minus f of x. So this minus f of x will just be that. So minus f of x. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Why am I putting that in parentheses? So I remember the distributed negative sign. And I'm going to write every single step. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm going to write the limit as delta x approaches 0. Again, very picky about that. So distributing my 3, I'm going to have 3x plus 3 delta x minus 7. Distributing my negative sign, I'm going to have minus 3x plus 7. And this is all over delta x. If you're having a good day, here's your thing. The three x's will simplify. The sevens will equal zero. And I'm left with three delta x over delta x. What can simplify? The delta x's can simplify. And now I take now so what when it as delta x approaches zero, when I simplify the delta x is I am just left with three. Just three. Does anyone want to tell me what that means? The slope of the tangent line is three, but there's no x here, right? So that means the slope of the tangent line will always be three. Why should that make sense? <laughs> Someone said it. Yeah, it, if I go up and graph this, this equation, 3x will, 3x minus 7, you want to graph that on your, you shouldn't have to graph that on your calculator. Do you have to graph that on your calculator? If I graph that on my calculator, I'm going to have a line like this. This, this would be negative 7 down here. This slope is 3, right? Because that this, this is the slope of the line. So any tangent line on a straight line is always going to equal the slope of the line. So this is telling me that the slope is always going to be 3. Make sense? Yeah. Well, I'm afraid. All right, so they asked me to find the slope at the point 4, 2. I forgot to talk about that. They asked me to find the slope at the point 4, 2. Since I go here, this is a formula for the slope. This is a slope formula, yes? This is a slope formula. It's just 3. So if I want to find the slope at the point 4, 2, is there anywhere for me to substitute in the x or the y for that? No. So my slope at this point is going to be 3. Well, my slope at any point is going to be 3. Good? Yeah. Now let's do one that's slightly more hard. Difficult. You have this one, yes? So now I want to do the same thing. I want to find the tangent line to the graph of the nonlinear function and then find the slope of the tangent line at those two points. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So I'm going to start with that formula. So I'm going to take the limit and delta x approaches zero. Hmm. Do we want to do f of x minus f of zero and then do it twice, or do we just want to use the formula? I think I want to do the formula. So this is the formula. I'm going to, if you write it like all the time, you'll know it because you have to know it. So I'm doing x squared plus 4. So every place I see x, the first time I'm going to type in, I'm going to type in, I'm going to put in x plus delta x. So I'm going to have x plus delta x squared plus 4 minus f of x, which is x squared plus 4. And I'm putting this all over delta x. We did these last year, we just didn't have this one that part, correct? No. Biggest mistake is not squaring that binomial correctly. When I square this binomial, how many terms will I have? Three, right? So I'll have x squared. What's my middle term? 2x delta x and then plus delta x, squared. delta x squared and then here's that plus 4 and now I'm distributing this negative sign so I'm going to have minus x squared minus 4 and this is all over delta x x squared and negative x squared will be 0. 4 and negative 4 will be 0. I purposely put me distributing this negative sign in a different color because everything behind, after that should simplify. If it doesn't simplify, you made a mistake. So I'm taking the limit. Delta x is delta x approaches 0. And now I have, I'll take baby steps. And what is, what is your math teacher very particular about? Yeah. Um, I'm picky about that. I'm picky about writing a limit of delta x approach to zero. I'm also picky that you show me that you can factor out a delta x and make this 2x plus delta x all over mm -hmm. delta x. And the delta x's will simplify. And I'm left with the limits as delta x approaches 0 of 2x plus delta x. Then what do I do? Plug in 0. Plug in zero. So if I plug in 0, I have 2x plus 0, which will just be 2x. And there I found the slope of the tangent line. I put zero in for this. Slope of tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line is 2x. So going back up here, it wants me to find the slope of the tangent lines to the graph of that at the point 0, 4, and 2, 8. So at the point 0, 4, the slope of the tangent line is 2x, so the slope of the tangent line at this is going to be 2 times 0, so the slope will be 0. If it's 0, what does that mean? Does anyone know? What's the slope? If I have a slope of 0, what does that mean? Small line is straight, but you're saying horizontal line. So, so this, this 0 means you have a horizontal line. 
talk about that more in a second. And then the other point was 28. So to find the slope of the point 28, remember that's 2x. So I'm going to do 2 times 2, and that will be 4. So the slope at the point, the slope of the tangent line at 28 is 4. So do me a favor, graph this. Just graph that for a second. Just graph that line. And I'll pull somebody up in a second. So that's a graph. So at zero, we said the tangent line was zero. So that would be a horizontal tangent line, yes? And then at this point here, when I go, the next point we did was 2, 8. Is this, did you look perfectly put that at 2, 8? So at 2, 8, if I were to draw a tangent line here, that would have a slope of 4. If I go further up, am I expecting the slope to get steeper or flatter? Steeper. So as I go further up, it's going to be steeper. On this side of the parabola, what's going to happen? What kind of slope will I have? I will have a negative slope. So at this point here, when it has a slope of zero, what do I hit? Well, what is that in the graph? It's a vertex, right? So you're going to have to remember that. Not today, but I like to remind myself of those things. All right. So this is what we've been writing every single time. And we're going to continue to write this. We are, this is, this is a slope. This is a, you must know this. I don't know how else to say it. You must know this. You must know this. I will never give that to you. Last year I gave it to you. This year I will not. I know. We're big people now. All right. So, so you will notice that some things here. We, when we're doing the, when we're finding the slope of the tangent line, we're now calling it the definition of a derivative because a derivative is the definition of an instantaneous rate of change, which means it's the same as the slope of the tangent line. And then I start doing this symbol here where I have that little tick mark. That means derivative. That's one way to say derivative. You good? That's one way. And then we also have this way, which is dy dx, which means change in y with respect to change in x. I usually write it like this. Those, are, that, those mean the same thing. But they don't do the deltas. They do the dy dx. That means derivative. Same symbol, same symbol. If you're not using the f of x and you're using a y, you'll have the y with the tick mark. Yes? And then sometimes they just write the derivative with respect to x. We never used that one. That was old. Okay? So now, this is the definition with respect to x. So you're taking the change in y with respect to the change in x, and that's what this is. You're taking the change in y with the change of x. So now when I ask you to find the derivative, you're thinking and they want me to find the slope of the tangent line. It says find the derivative if f of x is equal to x cubed plus 1. Use your revolve results to find the equation of the tangent line. So we're not only finding the slope of the tangent line, we're then going to substitute the point in to find the, the whole place in the tangent line. Good? So, I'm going to remember that formula. I'm taking the limit as delta x approaches 0. And what is that formula? Jack Welch? Uh, big one. The big one. Uh, f of x plus delta x minus f of x. And then I wrote it for you, but you're going to remember that you're taking the one that is delta x approaches zero. So when I do that x plus delta x, what does that look like, Eric? Uh, what do you mean? Hmm? Well, can you just tell me what you're substituting the x plus delta x in for? So that's going to be x plus delta x cubed plus 1 and then and then minus f of x which is putting that in parentheses so I remember that it should be my negative sign all over delta x now you were given the tools to, to do this quickly we talked about it before in here did we not or am I not Well, you have choices. You can take x plus delta x times x plus delta x times x plus delta x. And you can boil the first two, distribute the x, distribute the delta x, and find my term. 
Or you can remember the binomial here, which is Pascal's triangle. And let's just keep on having one. What was the next one? <coughs> Remember Pascal's triangle? And you add the two previous, so I added 1 plus 3 to get 4, so if I did one more row, this would be 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. I'm raising this to the third power, so I would use this row here. And you did this in algebra 2, and that, that, that was, you made the table. Remember that? Probably not. And then you have x here. And delta x, and you like did delta x to the third, delta x squared, delta x to the first, and delta x to the zero, which was just one. Remember this? And then you did delta x going the other way, so delta x to the zero, which is just one, delta x, delta x squared. Delta x to the third. So here I'd have one times delta x times one. So this would be one. This would be delta x. No, 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 no. Why did I write it like that? Why did you guys stop me? Did you run? So this is going to be x to the third, 3x squared delta x plus 3x delta x squared plus delta x to the third. Wait, wait, wait. Here. So I put the plus one here, and then I distributed my negative sign and put that there. That one's it. And my AP physics kids, you know how to check this like mentally, right? Here you go. Rihanna. Yeah. Who's the other one? Hi, Joe. X to third, negative X to third, one, one, no. This is delta X squared, yes. Oh, yes, it should. Like we should do another one to the third part since so I think this is wrong. I can nice I'm going to. I'm factoring out delta x y I rewrite this. So I'm gonna have three x squared plus three x delta x plus delta x squared. Yes. All right, so here the delta x is simplified, and I'm taking the limit as delta x approaches zero. Once I get rid of this delta x in the denominator, it's okay for me to substitute in zero for delta x. So I'm going to have 3x squared plus 3x times zero plus zero squared. So these two are going to equal zero, yes? 
and I'm going to end up with 3x squared. When I get here, that is the derivative, so I am either going to write f prime of x is equal to 3x squared, or I can do the dy dx, dy dx is equal to 3x squared, or I can do the y prime of x is equal to 3x squared, Either any of those ways, but I'm going to write it some one of those ways to tell myself that I have just found the derivative. Huh? You have to write that because that's telling me that I found the derivative of the function. Now, it wants me to find, use a result of the equation of the tangent line, the, use your results to find the equation of the tangent line at negative 2, negative 7. So the point is negative 2, negative 7. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the derivative at the point negative 2, at that, that x value negative 2. So to do that, I am going to take 3 times negative 2 squared. And when I do that, I believe I get 12. So that is the slope of the tangent line at that point. Slope of tangent line at that point. Because remember, the slope of the tangent line will change depending on what point I'm on. Except for a straight line. So now... I have to write the equation of the line that goes through this point that has this slope. I am a point-slope person, so I'm going to do point-slope first, and then I will show you your other way later. But I'm doing my way first. So point-slope says you take y minus y1, m times x minus x1. This y1 and x1 comes from this ordered pair. So to do this, I do y minus a negative 7, is equal to my slope, which is 12, x minus a negative 2. If I do this, I have y plus 7 is equal to 12x plus 24. Subtract 7, I get y is equal to 12x plus uh, 17. And that would be the slope, that would be the equation of a tangent line at that point. If you wanted to check it, you would graph your original equation, you would graph this and make sure that that line just sort of skates on the outside, touching the line. Do I have to show you the other way? Y is equal to mx plus b. So let's, so we're going to use that point, which was negative 7, negative, negative 7, negative 2. We said my slope was 12, negative 2. So this is negative 7 is equal to 24, negative 24 plus b, add 24 to both sides, I get 17. So then I have to go back and say y is equal to 12x plus 17. I think my way wins every single day. Don't you think? Yes, Mrs. Ward. Yes, Mrs. Ward. You were taught this because of the graphing calculator. The point slope means so much in my opinion. I don't know. Okay, but this is going to bring back some of the things that we just took a test on. Okay, so here I'm doing the same formula. This is asking me to find the derivative, yes? Yeah. So I'm yeah. doing that formula that I should have memorized. Jack, what is that formula I should have memorized? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, limit f of x, f of x, or limit the uh, period of x to of zero, um, f of uh, c plus you're, we're reading the wrong formula. You're reading the one on the first page, not the second page, I think. All right, so I have that, yes? So, yes, Mrs. Ward. So I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put in x plus delta x, yes? So here I'm writing this every single time, every single time. Square root of x plus delta x. Minus 2 minus f of x all over delta x. Now, just to remind you what we just took a test on. Oh, you add the, by the constant? Yes. But, oh. but if I were to put 0 in right now and I put 0 in right now, I would get that indeterminate 0 over 0, which tells me I can simplify, yes? So now. 
Emily's 100% correct. I'm going to multiply by the conjugate, so the square root of x plus delta x minus 2 plus the square root of x minus 2 all over the same thing exactly again. And we can't be lazy on a quiz and not write this for both the numerator and the denominator, like some people tried to do. Okay. So when I multiply this times this, remember the square roots go away? Yeah. Yes? yes? So it's going to be x plus delta x minus 2 minus, I'm going to put this in parentheses. Do I have to put that in parentheses? Yeah. Probably should. That's going to give me a mental trigger to, like, distribute the negative sign. Yes, and then help you. Delta x, and then here i got to write all this. It's a lot of writing, but I like writing, especially math. Well, it should kind of turn out kind of nice. So I have that, and I should close that parenthesis. Okay, we're good. Ooh. I feel like we need a color change. Mm. Orange. I did pick orange, so sorry. Wow. So this is going to be x plus delta x minus 2 minus x plus 2 all over delta x, and then this doesn't change at all. Oh, I am writing kind of small now. Hmm. Yes, I am. Hmm. I'm having a good day. I know that because the 2 and the negative 2 simplify, the negative x and the x simplify. The only thing I have left in that numerator is that delta x. I'm getting there. I like writing math. Didn't I say that? So here the delta x's will simplify. Oh, my color choices. So what am I left with on the numerator? One. I've written this every single time consistently, yes? yes this is what, now that I've taken care of this delta x in the denominator, it's okay for me to substitute delta x in. Zero for delta x, so zero minus two and then plus the square root of x minus 2. They're the same. So I have two of them the same. So how do I write that? Well, 1 over the square root of x minus 2, because I'm not multiplying them. I'm adding them. So I'm going to have a 2 here. And that's going to be my derivative. I think I'll choose to write it this way. Well, I'm not done yet because I want to use my results to find the equation of the change line at the point 6, two. Okay, thank you. I'm going to finish this one now. I'm going to go really fast. So we're doing the point 6, two, six, two, six, two, six, two. So now I have to find the derivative at 6 because I'm substituting the x value, right? And I have to put 6 into this formula here, so 1 over the square 2 times the square root of 6 minus 2. So 1 over 2 times the square root of 4, yeah? So 1 over 2 times 2, so 1 fourth. So that is my slope of my tangent line, 1 fourth. So do my way. So, so y minus 2, because I'm doing point slope, 1 fourth times x minus 6. Oh my gosh, we have to do fractions. This is terrible. 1 fourth x minus 3 halves. Add, add 2, so that's adding 4, so plus 1 half. My new master. Okay, your homework is going to be this review worksheet. Well, it's not a review worksheet. It is a worksheet, and I feel like.
I feel like it's 10 problems, and that's good. I feel like that's good. There are bits and pages. Okay.